What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And as promised today, we're gonna do a quick Death Knight free patch guide. I'm gonna go over a few tips for leveling, first things to do, what the different specs are, how to gear up at level 70, a little bit of your rotation, and that's gonna be pretty much it. This is gonna be a relatively short guide because I'm in all honesty, kind of low on time. I just finished the UI breakdown that went over all of my weak auras, all of my UI and add-ons, and everything in between. That is for the Twitch subs and YouTube members. So if you join the YouTube membership program or if you decide to subscribe to the channel, we're trying to hit 30K and we're gonna give away a free deluxe edition, which comes out today with the pre-patch so you can get a free level 70 boost. Either way, if you do that, it will help out the channel. But if you join the YouTube membership program, you're gonna have access to a lot of exclusive content as it's coming out. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna wanna do now is get your gear set up for leveling. There's a few things you're gonna wanna do get a few bags for leveling make sure you have some heavy knot eyed armor kits it's just extra stamina maybe get a leg armor which will just literally let your legs from the starting zone last you all the way till level 70 also if you're going to be solo grinding in blood furnace which should be one of the fastest ways to level you can get to level 70 in about seven hours this way then you should have a lot of restorative potions and also you're going to probably want to grab a blade of misfortune but if you're not solo leveling in dungeons then you're going to probably run into ramp Ramparts and in ramparts, you can also get two one handed swords that are not unique, which are going to be phenomenal for frost. Or if you're leveling as blood or unholy, unholy is what I would suggest if you're not doing the solo farms, then you can just get hell reaver, which is the exact same thing as blade of misfortune. It'll just take you a little bit of time to actually level up the skill for pole arms. Also, you might have noticed I scrolled by it, but I did buy some of these gear sets that I have for my level 70 character, swift steel bracers and red belt of battle. These are two amazing pieces and there's a couple other pieces you can get, but these ones were just really cheap. So absolutely get them I'll probably use them all the way up to level 76 ish so if you're solo leveling meta goblin put out a video today that you can solo level all the way to level 70 very quickly by soloing blood furnace it's super easy to do and honestly I would absolutely do this if I wasn't going to level with the dungeon group. So I might even end up doing this today. Also, a full guide was put out that I found from uh, this content creator named Slash Oom. So make sure to check them out. This is a full guide that'll go over all of the gear and consumables you need. It also goes over your talents, your rotation, the routes, bonus tips, all of that. But for the sake of this video, let me just show you guys the talents really fast. So you can just kind of take a screenshot of it. One of the important talents he's scrolling over right now is morbidity. This allows you to get an extra death strike out while you're actually keeping your diseases up. This is very important for, for this sort of a farm. It's extremely crucial, so I would absolutely suggest getting it. Okay, let's go over the talents and gear at level 70 that you will use all the way up. This is a realistic set. There's a couple pieces that can be better. Instead of red belt of battle, you could go all the way back and get a belt of 100 deaths from Lady Vosh. So I put together a relatively easy set to get with a lot of the gear pieces that I think are gonna be amazing. Now we're looking at frost first in the pre-patch. And one thing that is very important is pauldrons of berserking, also potentially fell furry leg plates, but Pauldrons of Berserking, these are gonna be your pre bis so make sure you focus on getting them. Shard of Contempt, really easy to get, and then there's quite a few trinkets you can get as your second one. Black and Naru Sliver is just the best one, but you could just grab Berserker's Call. You can see I have Red Belt of Battle and Swift Steel Bracers here, and my weapons are either Brutal Gladiator weapons or Muramasa, whichever I can get. Then moving into the talents, this is a single target build. You can see my glyphs are gonna be Frost Strike and Disease, and then the other ones are Horn of Winter, Pestilence, and Raised Dead. I should mention technically no one should ever run horn of winter but that's just a fight for another time we are going into the blood tree to get a little bit of bladed armor a little bit of crit and so on and so forth you can actually just screenshot this i won't go over all of the talents and frost is going to be one of those absolutely amazing specs to run during the pre-patch also i do want to mention before we even move further obviously my dk weak aura hud is in the discord channel if you want that or if you just come over to my twitch channel and exclamation point dkwa all of this dk weak aura hud is in there so you can just track all of your runes all of your runic power and all of your procs any of your abilities but it also switches for frost and unholy so that's really useful boom turning my face back on because i didn't realize i was gone still i'm just going to go over a very simple rotation is going to be to get up icy touch 
get up Plague Strike, which is both of your diseases, and then you're using Obliterate and Frost Strike. Those are your main abilities. You will have to use Blood Strike every round with Pestilence to keep up your diseases up. Your Glyph of Pestilence or Glyph of Disease keeps up your actual diseases every time you renew them with Pestilence. So you will have to use your Blood Runes on that instead of getting an extra actual Obliterate from it. Unfortunately, that's just the way we play until we get to go Blood Unholy subspec and pick up Epidemic. Without Epidemic, you need to make sure your diseases don't drop. That is literally the most important thing. It's a very oversimplified version of the rotation, but the most important thing for you is to make sure your diseases never drop. Again, you can grab Weak Auras to track them in my Discord or in the DK Discord. There's amazing Weak Auras. Then we have our procs. Killing Machine, as you can see on this side, make sure that my Frost Strike is gonna be a crit or my next Frost Strike or my next Howling Blast or Icy Touch. Never use it on Icy Touch as long as you can. Always use it on Frost Strike on single target. If there's multiple target, use it on Howling Blast. Every single target will get crit by Howling Blast. Howling Blast is your big AoE ability and Pestilence spreads your diseases. For single target DPS, you're gonna use Blood Presence, but for leveling, you're most likely gonna use Unholy Presence unless you are leveling in the Unholy Tree and you have Improved Unholy Presence. So do know if you have Improved Unholy Presence, then you don't need to level in Unholy Presence. Also, you'll probably get on a pale horse if you're leveling in the Unholy Tree. These are amazing talents for leveling. It'll just make everything you do faster. Moving on to Unholy. Now I'm showing the pretty much BIS list again during the pre-patch for leveling up all the way to level 80. But I do wanna mention if you're leveling all the way to level 70 in the open world, I would highly suggest leveling as Unholy. You should never have to stop and you can fully heal yourself all the time with your death strikes. But moving on, I have two changes that you might wanna note that might cost you gold. It's just if you have the gold instead of getting things from raid, it's Hardcoreum Battle Fist and Hardcoreum Choker. Realistically, the raid items are even better. It's just if you have the gold and aren't gonna get them from the raid, which really isn't that many people. As for weapons, I have the Apollyon right here, but just get your Brutal Gladiator's weapon. It's gonna be super easy. Now moving into the talent tree, you do see that we have a little bit into blood with Subversion. This will actually make you crit more with your Scourge Strike. And then we do get 30 more Runic Power from Runic Power Mastery, but past that, everything else is in the Unholy Tree. During leveling, again, there was the two talent I would point out would be on a pale horse and improved unholy presence. This is the only time you're going to be doing two handed unholy. It's leveling up to level 80, but at level 80, you will absolutely move on to dual wield unholy. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a full guide on level 80 frost and a level 80 dual wield unholy on the channel somewhere up there. <laughs> Anyways, you're gonna use Glyph of the Ghoul and most likely Glyph of Icy Touch for this spec. Now, if you're unholy, you do wanna make sure you're keeping up Bone Shield. Bone Shield is really nice. It gives you a 2% damage increase and then also keeping up Horn of Winter as usual. You're also gonna, again, open with your Icy Touch and Plague Strike. It's kind of the opener for everything anyone does. Also, you have a permanent ghoul. Keep your ghoul out. You are now a pet class, so you have to control your pet by sending him or bringing him back. So make sure you have a macro for pet attack and pet follow. Then you're gonna open again, like I mentioned, with Icy Touch, Plague Strike, and then Pestilence will spread your diseases. You're gonna be the two-handed Unholy build, so you will have Scourge Strike. I don't have it right now on this character that's set up, but you will have Scourge Strike, which will be your big damage dealing ability. You also will fill your Blood Runes with Blood Strike and Pestilence. Also, on AoE situations, you are going to want to make sure you're using Death and Decay. You can see my Death and Decay is also tracked right here. So that's basically the simple version of the rotation. Your Runic Power Spender is going to be Death Coil instead of Frost Strike like it was for Frost. Death Coil will also put a dot up on the target called Unholy Blight. This absolutely stacks, actually. It doesn't get clipped, so you don't need to worry about clipping. But you do need to worry about clipping your diseases, which tick every three seconds. From there, for single target, your biggest thing to do is making sure you're snapshotting your gargoyle. I don't want to get too much into it, but your gargoyle takes a snapshot of your haste and attack power when you summon it. So wait for bloodlust before you summon your gargoyle and use your potion while you're summoning your gargoyle. You can also make sure to keep up desolation, which is a buff right here that you get from using blood strike. So make sure you keep up this buff. I'm just tracking it here. So it's easy to know that desolation is always going to be up on yourself. You won't be able to go 
two-handed unholy and people are going to ask why because you can't get gargoyle as well as talents like nerves of cold steel or anything like icy talents so what you need to do until you can level up all the way to level 80 is be two-handed unholy one little tip for leveling is macro rune strike into almost all of your abilities mainly your main ability i would macro it into like obliterate or scourge strike but at level 80 it shouldn't happen too often in raids because you shouldn't be pulling aggro but leveling up you are fighting things all the time you're dodging and parrying like constantly so absolutely macro this in to all of your abilities and that's everything i wanted to cover personally today for the pre-patch going over all of your best gear your rotations for the different specs what specs you should be running during the pre-patch and also some tips and tricks for leveling this could have been way more in depth but again i'm running low on time tonight because we did make that video for the channel members and thank you guys all for the support on the channel we're doing a 24-hour stream on launch of pre-patch if you want to come and hang out on the twitch channel we just hit 1400 subs which is like beyond what I ever thought was ever possible. I literally almost cried on stream. This is <laughs> crazy. So thank you guys so much for the support on Twitch and on YouTube. I genuinely cannot express how appreciative I am, and I'm gonna try to keep pumping out as much content as I can for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you're excited for in the pre-patch, because I'm genuinely curious what people are gonna be doing during the pre-patch. And also let me know if there's any other guides or anything else you want me to cover. And from there, guys, just have so much fun in the pre-patch, and I'll see you all on the next one.